Good morning, all. Uh, I try to, to, to uh, give a, a, a rapid overview of uh, the standards of care in uh, 2024 and uh, to talk about some uh, challenges. So here are my disclosure. They have uh, some uh, guidelines that have been published this last year. The one from the working group uh, between EHA and ISA group. Our guidelines from the French National Reference Center and the MSmart from the uh, Mayo Clinic. So uh, first is uh, to do the diagnosis and uh, it requires the presence of all of the following, uh, an amyloid-related systemic syndrome, a positive amyloid staining by Congo red or electron microscopy, and a clear evidence that amyloid is immunoglobulin-related. Uh, and the typing should be done by mass spectroscopy, immunofixation and immunohistochemistry, and immunoelectro uh, microscopy. And you have to do this rapidly to avoid this kind of uh, survival curve if you wait uh, uh, enough uh, to, uh, for the, the patient uh, having a very severe cardiac disease. So before treating the patient, you have to do a precise, precise quantification of the responsible monoclonal protein, and most often it's free light chain. And we have three uh, assays, uh, the binding site being the most used, and it was used in this classical uh, criteria of uh, response. And as you see, uh, the survival in patients with AL amyloidosis is clearly depending on uh, response. And in this uh, criteria, the uh, CR was negative serum and urine uh, immunofixations and a normal kappa on lambda uh, ratio. But in the, the common working uh, group uh, guidelines, there is this very important uh, sentence that the availability of effective low toxic treatment like daratumumab is changing the treatment paradigm in AL amyloidosis with a more frequent research or a more profound hematologic response. And the CR in the big study Andromeda was not a normal uh, FLC ratio, but a normal uh, involved free light chain. And in the common working group guidelines, it was uh, IFLC below 20 or DFLC below 10. And uh, uh, DFLC below 10 is a really an, a nice way uh, to, to, to determine the, the response. And in this uh, study from the London group, it was better than the classical uh, CR. But uh, we have to be more and more uh, precise in evaluating the response. Uh, we can uh, do uh, MRD, like in this study from the uh, common uh, Italian and uh, English group or German group, with, uh, sh that shows that the patient in CR, with a classical uh, CR, have a very uh, good response rate and better response rates is the MRD determined on the bone marrow by cytometry is negative with lower DFLC and lower relapse rates. And as Ashu uh, shown yesterday, the uh, MRD by mass spec is very uh, interesting. And uh, once again, with the classical CR, we, we, uh, we see that uh, only one third of patients in CR at one year had a negative uh, MRD with a better outcome. And as you told us uh, yesterday, uh, using a more strict definition of CR, the survival is the same, but there is more uh, organ response when the MRD is negative. Before treating, you have to uh, get uh, an accurate diagnosis of the underlying, underlying hemopathy. And it's very important because the treatment is, uh, is to uh, kill the cells that produce the, the, the free light chain. So you have to really uh, determine what are these cells. So you do bone marrow aspiration and biopsy, flow cytometry uh, of the blood and marrow, genetic study, and T1114 translocation is very important to, uh, to search. And uh, you have to find bone lesion. And uh, if the uh, monoclonal protein is an IgM, you have to search for an IgG 
D88 mutations uh, for lymph nodes and splenomegaly. And then you have to do a complete exploration of organ involvements, and I have no time to, to develop. And uh, you have to uh, determine what is the prognosis. And the Mayo Clinic staging are very important. The classic one from 2004 with antiproben-P and troponin. The modified in 2012 introducing the DFLC and the one which was modified by the European team in 2013 with uh, antiproben-P below or above 8,500. And clearly, it's uh, the best way to, to uh, find what uh, which are the uh, more severe patients, uh, upper right. Uh, it's better than uh, the 2012 uh, in upper left. left. And uh, uh, you can see uh, that when you take the uh, stage four from the 2012 uh, staging system, and you look at uh, antiproben P below or above uh, 8,500, there is a very huge difference. So, and for the kidney, it's uh, really clearance and proteinuria that are important with a very uh, difference to the, for the risk of dialysis at two years from 3% to 60%. So, the, the, what is the, the, the goal of the treatment? Is to reverse the balance between the formation of amyloid deposits, which depends on the level of free molecular light chain and their elimination by the, the body while waiting for treatment, accelerating this elimination. So you have to reduce the levels of light chain by targeting the cells that produce them. And there are plasma cells in 90% of cases. So we use myeloma chemotherapies with much better effectiveness on response rate, speed of responses, and duration of responses. And it's due to plasma cell stress induced by anormal light chain. And if you have a drop in uh, uh, light chain, the clinical condition will improve, but it's very slowly and it's very different uh, from patient to patient, and it depends on organ. It's relatively rapid for liver, and it's slower for other organs. And you have uh, to, to know that chemotherapy does not affect the deposit uh, themselves. So we, are, we have done a lot of progress since the 90s in the treatment of AL amyloidosis. In, uh, uh, before uh, 2000 or 95, we treated patients with malfalent prednisone with one third of patients responding and the uh, median survival of one and a half year. And then uh, arrive IDOS treatment and uh, melphalan and dexamethasone with almost the same response rate, 65% of patients responding in our study. And we compare both treatment in uh, randomized uh, trials and we show that uh, the survival with MDEX was much better so we stopped at this time to use uh, IDOS treatment in, uh, in France in first line for AL amyloidosis. And then come, uh, come came uh, bortezomib, and really it was a game changer with 65% of uh, response. And you can use uh, VCD with uh, cyclophosphamide, or you can use with melphalan in the excellent treatment that it's a BMDEX. And uh, recently came uh, daratumumab, and it's really uh, also a game changer. In the big study, uh, Andromeda, 400 patients, almost 400 patients treated with six months of VCD or six months of daravcd plus one and a half year of daratumumab monthly. Clearly, uh, the main objective was which It was complete hematologic response with the normalization of the uh, free light chain level. It was, we, we came from 90% with VCD to 60%. And the global response was impressive. It's 92% with daravcd and 77 with VCD. VCD is a good uh, drug, but DARA-VCD is much better, and the response were rapid. 
it was uh, 15 days for Dara VCD and three weeks for uh, VCD. And it translated in a much higher uh, response, was, response rate for organs, and it was uh, 53% at 18 months for cardiac versus 24, and 58 versus 26 for renal. So in the guidelines, uh, common guidelines for the two society, uh, DARA VCD is clearly the treatment of choice if you can use uh, DARA tumumab in uh, your country. In our PNDS, we are not so, uh, so strict and uh, we think that first line treatment must be conditioned by the severity of organ damage, in particular cardiac, and not all patients but uh, should uh, receive a combination of the four drugs. And uh, what is really important is that the treatment must be adapted according to the speed and depth of hematological uh, response. So we think that there is still a room for simple and inexpensive treatment for the less serious patients, maybe MDEX, maybe VCD. For stage one patient with uh, less than 10% marrow plasma cell, no renal insufficiency, or deep hypoalbuminemia, no liver damage with elevated bilirubin. And it's because you can check the response at one or two months and add other drugs if the patient is not in CR. And it, if there is any risk factor uh, in France, the, the, the treatment is uh, DARA VCD or DARA BMDEX. And honest, uh, honestly, main, oh, Almost all patients receive daratumumab first line, but sometimes for all patients, not to all because you have to give 40 milligrams of dexamethasone in the MDEX uh, treatment, we have some patients that are treated with uh, simple uh, treatment. And uh, one uh, challenge is uh, what you can do for patients that are not in CR after daravicidi. And the Mayo Clinic tried to respond to this uh, question in this paper. And they said that autologous stem cell transplantation can be a good uh, option with 33% 36, 36 of uh, response. But uh, as, uh, as uh, told by uh, Muriel Roussel from Limoges at the uh, ISAM meeting uh, one uh, month ago, Transplant is, uh, in AL is no more a valid option with all the new drugs that uh, we have. And there was no real contestation of this uh, sentence at the, uh, the ISA meeting. And otherwise, you can use uh, uh, Venetoclax. It's 50% of uh, CR uh, in this study, but we don't know if patients add or not, or, or not the T1114. And when we have the T1114, the response with uh, uh, venetoclax is almost 80%. And it's uh, uh, why we will do this protocol. Uh, uh, for patients with a T1114 that is, uh, and no complete response after three months of DARA VCD, we will wear in place uh, cyclophosphamide by venetoclax, and we hope that we will uh, obtain a lot of uh, CR with these uh, associations. The, the second challenge is uh, how to treat patients with a more severe cardiac amyloidosis, with this uh, really uh, dramatic uh, survival curve. Uh, it was before the daratumumab uh, era in uh, a series from uh, France. So one solution is uh, to use daratumumab, and it's uh, Statis Castritis has done this uh, prospective study uh, in monotherapy with a, a better survival. It's not really uh, good. It's 45% uh, of patients living at uh, one year, but it's uh, better. And what is very important in this disease is that uh, the more severe the disease is, the sooner a response must be obtained. It's uh, 130 patients before daratumumab not responding at uh, three months. And as you see, it's okay when you are in stage one, you have the time to uh, change the treatment. For stage two, you have time, but not too long. For stage three, you have no time at all. 
And it has been shown in this study from the London group, only the patients who are in VGPR or better at one month are uh, uh, not so good, but uh, accepted survival. So we think that for more severe patients, the 3B from the uh, Mayo Clinic criteria, patients with a liver amyloidosis with high bilirubin, a very severe autonomic dysfunction, a rapidly progressive renal failure, and a nephrotic syndrome with very low serum albumin below 10. Uh, we have to check free light chain measurement every week. You have to use DARA containing regimen and we have to do rapid modification if we have not obtained a VGPR at two weeks or a CR at four weeks. Using Venetoclax 40, 11, 14, imid based regimen and maybe the new uh, immunotherapy. So uh, the third challenge is uh, what to do for patients with circulating monoclonal IgM. You have to be aware of plasmatic form. One uh, fourth of these patients have in fact an IgM myeloma, often with a T1114, and you have to use treatment for myeloma for this patient, even if they have an IgM. And otherwise, you have to use the best macroglobulinema treatments that is rituximab, bendamustine, and plus or minus bortezomib, rituximab, bortezomib, dex, the uh, BTK inhibitor, maybe venetoclax, and here the autologous stem cell transplantation is really a good option for patients with uh, IgM. You have to monitor uh, the treatment, and, and after, uh, you have to look for relapse. Relapse have been described 20 years after the initial treatment, so you have to uh, check uh, free light chain regularly every three months, usually uh, unlimitedly. And you have to monitor uh, organ uh, damage with a cardiac marker, a renal marker, and hepatic marker. And if there is an hematologic relapse, you have to uh, begin the treatment immediately if the disease was severe at diagnosis. Here an example of a 62-year-old patient. We treated her in 2006 with MDEX. She had a very severe cardiac disease. And as you see sometimes, maybe in 25% of patients with MDEX, you have this kind of response. It's why we continue to say that it's a good option for very few patients. So complete response. Uh, at the first cycle and 11 years of complete response. And you have this slight increase in free light chain and with uh, a, a, a relapse of his cardiac amyloidosis. He was at below 300 of uh, uh, NT-proben-P and it rise really rapidly. And we treat her with VCD with a, a new complete response and she's in complete response six years after. But as you see, the NT NP didn't drop uh, so, like it was before the relapse. So you are really to treat the patient rapidly before uh, or new organ uh, damages. And if there is no severe damages, you can uh, uh, look of waiting for a worsening of organ damage if it's only for example, a renal uh, disease with a normal creatinine, and you have to uh, look for proteinuria, and you have to treat the patient with the DFLC, which is half of the initial uh, DFLC. And the choice of treatment uh, de depend at relapse of the type of initial treatment and its efficacy, the severity of the initial disease, the type of organ affected, if you have, uh, if daratumumab was not used in first line, you have to use daratumumab. If dara in first line, you can use venetoclax if T1114. You can have good responses with triplets with the proteasome inhibitors and immediate dexamethasone. And maybe you can use now uh, B-specific antibodies and you have to monitor the response once again, it's uh, completely uh, uh, no uh, uh, interesting to uh, continue a drug if there is no uh, response. And you can discuss prolonged treatment if the patient has relapsed early during previous lines. Uh, the fourth challenge is the uh, role of modern immunotherapy. 
the belantamax, the bispecific antibodies, and the CAR T cell. And I think that Statis will uh, respond to this uh, challenge uh, in the next talk. So we uh, went from uh, the survival in 2000 on the left to the survival in uh, Andromeda study. And uh, the estimated survival is uh, 65% at six years. So it's really uh, completely uh, different. And even in this very recent paper, if you have a complete cardiac response, the survival is exactly the same as the general match population. So really uh, huge progress in the treatment of this disease. So thanks to Nathalie Mullman, Agnès Parujan, and Frank Bridou, the initiators of this uh, excellent meeting, to all the members of French and Bel Belgium Network for L amyloidosis, to the French Association against uh, amyloidosis, and to the research team in, in uh, Limoges. And thank you for your uh, attention. Thank you, uh, uh, I know. Well, no, we have now the discussion. Uh, okay. so, so until uh, 9.45. Um, uh, thank you also for uh, illustrating that uh, a complete response, especially for this audience, is not, that does not mean that the, the, the disease is gone. And uh, that you should, uh, uh, every three months, uh, check the free light chains for a long, long period. Yeah. even 20 years. I think that's, that's a very uh, important uh, uh, observation and uh, thing for us. Uh, the, the, uh, it's open for discussion at the moment. Are there questions? Uh, thank you. I'm sorry, I, I have two questions. <laughs> the first is, if you have a patient who are not in complete response after one or two cycles, and uh, uh, was not the 1114 translocation, but eligible for uh, autograft. What, what do you, what's your recommendation? Because uh, uh, do we need to, uh, to pass to the bispecific antibody immediately or no? Uh, it, it depends on the severity of the disease. If the patient is not in complete response, but have not uh, criteria of uh, uh, bad criteria, uh, you know, like uh, severe cardiac disease of uh, very low uh, hypoalbuminemia, you can wait. And you have some patients with 50% uh, of response that uh, normalize uh, their kidney function, for example. It's not very uh, frequent, but it can. You, you, you can see that. Uh, the, 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 a complete response is clearly uh, better, but you have to balance with the severity of the disease. If you really want to obtain a complete response, usually, we, we, if there is a T1114, you can use venetoclax. If not, you can use a combination with emits. And uh, then maybe be by specific, but we don't know yet uh, what will be the role of bispecific. Bispecific, uh, we, we have uh, almost 100% of very good response, you know. Uh, we, we see the, the, the free light chain going from 1,000 to uh, less than 1 milligram in some patients. It's very impressive, but it's, it's really, uh, 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 it's, it's uh, not like daratumumab. Daratumumab is very well tolerated, and with bispecific, where the, you have an immunosuppression that is very uh, important. So you have to balance the risk and the, and the gain. But uh, clearly, we, we, I think the last uh, autologous stem cell transplantation we have done in, in, in our uh, centers in Poitiers and Limoges, I think it was five years ago. So we, we don't do uh, a lot. Huh? I think IgM is a very good indication. Patient with a real myeloma with a crap criteria and a, 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 an amyloidosis which is not severe, okay. Otherwise, the, 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 all the treatments that we have are, are, are better, I think. Okay, thank you. And the second question concerning the IgM. Uh, amyloidosis, because there are no clear uh, development in, in the literature and uh, about uh, 
the follow-up and the goal of the response and the biomarker. Uh, what biomarker do, do we need to, uh, to follow? It's uh, free light chain or it's uh, IgM and uh, when? So you have to follow both, uh, IgM and free light chain. The most important is uh, free light chain and because it's the culprit of the, of the deposit formations. But it's very uh, difficult to obtain a complete response when the, 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 the immunoglobulin is an IgM. We are not so good. Now, when it's not an IgM, uh, you, we, we have very, very good response rate. With an IgM, it's difficult. And uh, it's why high dose treatment could be a, a good uh, option. And we, we try new, new drugs like uh, Betica inhibitor and Zanubritimib seems to be uh, the, the most uh, interesting drug, and maybe venetoclax. But to obtain a CR with IgM is really difficult. Okay. Uh, there's a question. Yes, I have a question um, about the treatment duration for daratumumab. Is there an international consensus in comparable situations, of course, because uh, lots of our patients are wondering, because center-dependent in comparable situations, some say it's six months, some uh, one year, some two years, or some lifetime. So uh, is there a, a consensus or something about daratumumab? Treatment uh, there is no, no real consent. In the Andromeda study, it was two years. Uh, six months of VCD DARA plus one and a half year of DARA. We, we have done a study in relapsing patients with daratumumab alone. It was only six months. And uh, we have very good results. We have the same results, but we are not sure. We will not compare we clearly, but that the uh, study from Boston with one and uh, half a year or, or two years, I don't remember. And the patient who have a very good response, they stay in response for a, a long time. So we don't really know. Uh, often we, we, in France, we do uh, six months of VCD DARA and six months of DARA alone. But it's not uh, really a, a, a consensus. And yes. if you have a bad prog some bad prognosis feature, a lot of uh, plasma cells is in bone marrow or bad cytogenetic, maybe you can uh, continue the, the daratumumab much longer. Okay, There's ra room for one last small question. It's a quick question, Anna. Thank you. Very nice talk. Thank you for bringing up melphalan in your uh, discussion about treatment for amyloidosis. We seem to have forgotten the use of meldex. We certainly very rarely use it. So. How do you think we might be able to, because some of the patients, as you showed, have very prolonged remission with melphalan, and it's really well tolerated when it's used. So what are your views on how we can maximize use of this drug? Because second line we've used, it doesn't really seem to work as well once patients have progressed after DARA. So its role is going to be in frontline setting. Yeah, I think it's only for the, sorry, mainly for the frontline setting. And if you have used six months of uh, cyclophosphamid, um, uh, it's not uh, a good thing to add uh, al alkylant treatment because you, you have a risk of uh, myelodysplasia. No, the, I think really the, the, it's for good risk patient in first line and only to select uh, the 25 or 30 percent of patients that will be in CR after one month. That's a good patient. And if they are not in CR after one month, you, we have new drug now to, to, to add. So it's really for patients who don't want to have a perfusion, to want an only oral treatment. Thank you very much. I know.